The automation revolution is beginning to come into fashion. The clothing industry is among the latest economic sectors to be making the leap, which is ironic because it was among the first to be mechanized. Today, they still require skilled human hands to guide and handle the materials. In this episode of Moving Upstream, our third on the robotics revolution, we're looking at what these new cutting edge technologies can do and the impact they're beginning to have on the developing world. Across the globe, 60 million people toil each day in the garment industry. It offers the poor, poor women in particular, job opportunities they might not have otherwise. The journal visited garment factories in Bangladesh. They employ more than three and a half million people most working for little more than the country's minimum wage, around 64 US dollars a month. And sometimes toiling under conditions that endanger their lives. There has been another horrific incident at a garment factory in Bangladesh. At least 112 people died. Hundreds of injured were rushed from the scene. Now a new threat is emerging to workers' livelihoods machines that automate parts of the clothes-making process. This German-made robot, for example, is knitting sweaters for brands like H&M and Zara. In January, WSJ's John Emont visited garment factories in Bangladesh. I would visit factories in Dhaka where workers would work manually to make sweaters while automated machines would also work to do the exact same thing and it was quite clear that the workers were going to be replaced by these machines. And I would ask the workers, are you afraid that your jobs will be taken away by the automated machines? And they would say, yes, we're scared. Until recently, machines lacked the versatility, the dexterity to handle soft materials. That comes naturally to humans. But thanks to machine learning and other forms of AI, what you're seeing here may be just the tip of the needle. New types of machines capable of ever more complex tasks are on the way. Machines like these threaten to make the situation worse for a country in dire need of more jobs. Bangladesh, according to the World Bank, needs to add two million jobs a year to keep pace with its expanding labor force. But the number of new jobs added by the garment trade has fallen to 60,000 a year. When you zoom out a bit, you see a region bursting at the seams with people needing work. Close to a million individuals are projected to enter the workforce here every month for the next two decades. By one estimate, if automation reaches its potential, some countries could lose more than 80% of their garment, textile, and apparel manufacturing jobs. How worried are you for countries like Bangladesh? I'm very worried, given that their economy is dominated 85% by the garment industry. Carrie Nordland, a professor at Brown University, teaches about the impact of globalization on women. Because women have these jobs and often are the sole breadwinners for their families. The sole breadwinners. That's right, they've been able to lift their families out of the depths of poverty. Those low skill jobs may become extinct very soon. Eric Brynjolfsson, who studies the economic impact of what he calls the second machine age, thinks the only solution for these countries is education. They're going to have to leapfrog and get up to the level that Europe, the United States, Japan, and other advanced countries have, and that's not an easy task. Technology can help there too. Um, we have online programs at MIT. Some of these people aren't even literate. That's right. So a lot of these women have very basic, basic reading, basic math skills. So where will these women go? Will they have opportunities for retraining? This is the open question. Fortunately for them, societies that employ massive armies of sewers still have some time. Autonomous sewing machines aren't nearly as far along as, say, autonomous vehicles. 
On a recent trip to Japan, we visited a company that's been taking intermediary steps in the autonomous direction. That's where we visited Yuho, a company that's been working for decades on the challenge of replacing sewing machines with machines that do the sewing. This is Akihisa Takagi, the 77-year-old founder and chairman of Yuho. Yuho's machines automate some of the more time-consuming steps. Yuho suggested that we visit a place where we could see some of its machines in actual practice. They sent us to a prison. What kind of uniforms are they making here? At Nagasaki Prison in Japan, Yuho's machines help the inmates, whose faces the prison authorities required us to blur, meet their daily quotas. And how much training do you need to be able to use one of these? They use this one, for example, to add pockets to uniforms, a job that would otherwise take three people and a lot more time to complete. The inmates must produce at least 50 pairs of pants and coats per day. Yuho's owner tells us his machines are used in China, where labor costs are rising, to help make clothes for Uniqlo. But the developing world hasn't been all that interested, he says, because the price tag for them is so high. Cost is one reason why automation in the garment industry may take root first in the West. One U.S. company called Software is aiming to do something Yuho has not, removing almost entirely human involvement in the process of making, to start with, t-shirts. The company provided this footage of its prototype Sobot. Software touts that its Sobots will bring garment production back to America. By the end of 2018, it plans to open a factory in Arkansas capable of cranking out over a million t-shirts a year. At prices, the company says are on par with the lowest wage countries in the world. So the day when Sobots, from start to finish, can produce articles of clothing, appears to be not so far upstream. What do you think? Will these technologies have a dramatic impact on the US and on the developing world? We'd love to hear your comments.